On a cold and foggy day, what does the pilot do? He goes home into his video editing studio and he makes a video. about landing the Europa monowheel and some of the techniques that we do. Hi, it's Skimmer here and I'm going to do a video on how I land my Europa monowheel. So join me and uh, we'll do some analysis of um, a whole bunch of different landings that I've done from my first landing to my more, most current landing. So, hope you have fun watching. Here we go. Music, flying, and more. This is Pete Casty, and you're watching Skimmer Productions. So in this video, we're going to look at how to manage the controls on the Euro Europa monowheel. It is very important that we land in the, well, I guess we'll call it the two-point landing, the main wheel and the tail wheel at the same time and not do a wheel landing. Uh, a lot of people have ended up crashing their uh, aircraft trying to do a wheel landing. It's just far too um, wobbly to be up on that main gear trying to balance everything as you land. Also, there could be a bounce and that's when the, you end up with the prop strike. So we want to make sure that we keep the stick all the way back on touchdown so that the aircraft stays with the nose high and you don't risk um, having the, uh, the prop get, get smashed. Uh, also, when you land like that with the tail all the way down, it keeps the outriggers closer to the ground as well and so that they help to balance you as you land. Uh, some people suggest that even landing a little bit tailwheel first and having the main gear plop down is better than a uh, wheel landing. So let's look at my video and see how um, I'm trying to keep the stick back. Some of my first landings, you know, I, I'm used to flying a uh, Piper Pawnee towing, so, towing sailplanes. So in that we do wheel landings on the dirt all the time. So you can kind of see in the beginning when I'm trying to land the Europa, I'm having a tendency to kind of unload the arrow, well, kind of bringing the stick back forward to um, kind of prevent that bounce and then it ends up bouncing anyway. I found when I just keep that stick back and just hold it back, even after I bounce, I keep the stick back and it will land in that, what we would call three point landing, but um, I'm going to call it a two point landing because the tail wheel and the main gear hit the, at the same time. It's just good to hold that position because the aircraft um, does want to float when you get really close to the ground. Um, another thing that we're looking at is that when you put down the flaps and the landing gear, they both go at the same time, uh, you got a like a thousand foot a minute descent. So I've learned to start putting the flaps down on final and just um, managing that. Just come in a little bit high. I put the flaps and the gear down on final um, and just play that. Let, let it come all the way down to the ground. Uh, reduce my airspeed. My, I've been trying to target about 65, um, kind of on the real short final. And then once I'm real close to the ground, I'm trying to get it down to 60. That seems when I do the best. So let's have a look and see how I do. And I'll try to narrate as we go. This was my first landing in uh, April 13, 2018 this year. And this is my very first landing, so you can see that uh, I've got a good descent rate and I'm having to add power here. So let's see what I do with my hands. Looking good, reducing the power, feeling for the ground. Big bounce and my hand goes forward a couple times there and then finally I hold it back. And that was my first landing, so 
I was I was learning, but I think I did pretty good because I was able to reuse the aircraft. Okay, this is in November 9th now this year, so I'm much more proficient at landing. And let's see how I keep my hand back. Now this runway slopes uphill, so it's a little bit hard. Playing for the ground. Watch my hand. A little bounce, but my hand stays back. Landing much better. I know I'm off to the left-hand side of the runway, but I coaxed it back over to the right. This is my dry lake landing. Depth perception was much harder on this landing. So I do end up bouncing and I do go forward with my hand to kind of relieve that bounce. Then I catch it. There's the bounce. Hand went forward, forward and then I got that hand back and let it uh, land again. I think there was two bounces in there. So it was pretty good. Okay, let's watch this landing. You can see we've got a thousand feet a minute. The the throttle's at idle. 1,000 feet a minute down. We are uh, 400 feet above the runway. And we've got a good fast descent right there. It's coming down. Okay, getting ready to flare. I'm a little fast. A little bit fast. That's about 70 knots right there. There's 65. I just touched the ground. There's a bounce, but the stick is back. And it, the bouncing settled. So that was a lot of bouncing due to a high speed touchdown. You could hear the outriggers right there as they touch the ground. And then eventually you don't have enough aileron authority to keep the outrigger up. You can hear it dragging. Okay, this is one of my earlier landings. You can see I'm just trying to use my fingertips. I thought I'd have a light con uh, touch on the controls and uh, I might be a bit fast. And you can see I start bouncing, bouncing so much I get a death grip here. Okay, watch the stick. It's back, it's back. I got a bounce and I'm letting it off and it's making the bounce worse. If I had just kept the stick back, it would have been better. Look at that death grip now. Okay, another landing. I believe this was the same day. Watch the stick position. Yeah, had a bounce. Been better off just kind of holding the stick back again. You can see how active you got to be with those rudder pedals. Okay, this is landing on dirt. This is kind of a downhill landing. Landing the Europa on dirt is very easy. Okay, sticks back, just playing it, playing it. There's a bounce, but I'm holding the stick back, and then it just settles perfectly. But dirt's very forgiving. And another landing here. The airspeed doesn't look too fast. Here I reduce the throttle right there. There's a bounce. Yep, pumping the stick still. I think I could still hold it back after that first bounce. Okay, this this is in Silver Springs, Nevada. This is one of my biggest bounces. I had to move the stick forward to keep from ballooning up too high and then stalling high. Not really too fast. That's about 80 knots. Dropping down to 75. There's 70, and I hit pretty high, so I had to get the nose down a little bit because I was really going high. So that wasn't a bad landing. A couple of bounces, but I recovered nicely. Okay, this one almost scared me. I had to add power because I was more than a thousand feet a minute down. Here comes landing. Let's watch that hand. Hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. Keep bringing it back. Keep bringing it back. There we go. Hold it back, hold it back. Good landing. Just kept that stick back the best I could without moving it too far forward. OK, 
Okay, you can see how fast we come down at idle. That's a thousand feet a minute down. Airspeed looks pretty good. I'm about 70 knots right there. Looking for 65. This was earlier in the year. This might have been in June, so I was starting to get a handle of the aircraft. Okay, floating, floating. Hold it off, hold it off. Yeah, see now that airspeed was about 65 when I touched down, so that was a good landing. Another landing, looks like I've got a little power in right now, because I'm low. Those flaps create a lot of uh, drag for descent. Okay, we're going to try holding it off the ground. Yep, air speed's too fast. Keep that stick back. Bouncing so hard, my hand probably just went forward. It really is unnerving when you're in the aircraft. The bounces feel pretty high. Just, just a three or four foot bounce feels like it's really high in such a low plane. And there we go. Okay, so that's my video on landing the Europa monowheel. Um, these landing to net techniques are specific to the monowheel. Um, also, you'll see that my I have the old style um, tail wheel, which is forward of the rudder. I know that having the extended tail wheel um, makes ground handling better, uh, takeoffs better as well. Um, but I don't know how robust that tail wheel is by landing on the tail wheel first. I've not read anything about that. I'm not sure what's going on um, with that tail wheel. So this only applies to mine. Uh, also, you know, know that this is not instruction. This is really just entertainment value. Maybe you're a Europa pilot as well and you um, agree with what I say or don't agree. Or maybe it'll lead you to a good um, professional educated uh, decision or way to do stuff. Uh, before everybody freaks out, I understand that on runway 32 at Stead, I was landing before the displaced threshold. If you notice, there was um, uh, runway work on, run on the cross runway uh, 826, and so there was no landing or takeoff traffic on 826, which is that um, in that displaced threshold area. So um, my aircraft is super light, so I was positive that the runway can handle my bearing weight as I landed on it, and there was no um, landing or takeoff traffic right at that point. So um, that's why I landed there. So again, this is not instruction. Please seek out um, another CFI. I'm not a power CFI. Um, seek out a CFI to get training. Also, if you're, you buy a Europa Monowheel, read all you can, study all that you can. If you're not on top of your game, you're, you're not going to want to try this aircraft um, your first time landing. Um, if you do fly with somebody, if you fly with an instructor to get checked out in this, make sure they understand the aircraft completely and that they get a handle on the aircraft before they try backing you up on your first landing. So um, that's my suggestion. It's not mandatory. You can do what you want. Um, again, this is just entertainment purposes and I'm not giving you instruction. Uh, the music at the very beginning of this piece was written by John Richards and I. John Richards laid down the original um, um, guitar track and then I laid everything around it. So he came up with the original concept of the music and then I did everything else in the background to it. I love working with John Richards. Um, He's a lot of fun, really good artist. He's one of my business partners. So again, thanks everybody for watching and hope you had fun. I had fun making it for you.